COVID vaccine is, is, is injected into your arm, we now know that only 25% of it actually stays in your arm. And the other 75% is literally collected by your lymphatic system and fed into your circulation. So these little packages of messenger RNA, and by the way, in a single dose of a Moderna vaccine, there are 40 trillion messenger RNA molecules, 40 wow. trillion that are injected into your arm. So three quarters of these are taken, connected by the lymphatics. They go into your bloodstream in these little packages that are designed to be absorbed into a cell. But obviously when something's in your circulation, the only cells that they're going to get absorbed into is the cells around your blood vessels. And the place where absorption happens is in the capillary networks. In other words, these are the, the tiniest vessels where the blood slows right down. These are tiny, tiny vessels. So these little packages of genes are absorbed into the cells around the blood vessels at the vascular endothelium. The packages open, the genes are released, your body then gets to work reading these genes and manufacturing trillions and trillions of COVID spike proteins. Because even though you get 40 trillion genes, you, each gene can produce many, many COVID spike proteins. So, and the purpose of the spike proteins is that your body recognizes this as a foreign protein and will make antibodies against it so that you're then protected against COVID. That's the idea. But the, here's where the problem comes. In a virus, in a coronavirus, that spike protein becomes part of the viral capsule. In other words, around, it's part of like the cell wall around the virus called the viral capsule. But, but it's not in a virus, it's in your cells. So it therefore becomes part of the cell wall of your vascular endothelium, which means that you, these cells that line your blood vessels, which are supposed to be smooth so that your blood flows smoothly, now have these little spiky bits sticking out. So it is absolutely inevitable that blood clots will form because your blood platelets circulate around in your vessels. And, and the purpose of blood platelets is to, to, to detect a damaged vessel and block that vessel to stop bleeding. So when the platelet comes through the capillary, it suddenly hits all these little COVID spikes that are jutting into the inside of the vessel. It is absolutely inevitable that a blood clot will form to block that vessel. Oh. Now that's how platelets work. So, so, so just as this could be, is absolutely predicted to cause cancer because it's of carcinogens, these spike proteins will predictably cause blood clots because of where well, they're in your blood vessels. It, it is guaranteed. So Dr. Bagdi then said to me, the way to prove this is we need to do a, a, a blood test called a D-dimer test um, to find out if this is really happening. So, because the, the, the problem with the, the blood clots that we hear about through the media that, that they claim are very rare are the big blood clots. These are the ones that cause strokes and heart attack clots in your brain. Those are the ones that show up on, on, on CT, CT scans and CT angiograms and MRIs. The clots I'm talking about are microscopic. These are tiny, they're literally on a capillary level and they are scattered throughout your capillary network. So they are not going to show on any scan, they're just too small and too scattered. So the only way to find out for sure if this predictable mechanism of clotting was actually happening was to do this blood test called a D-dimer. And so the D-dimer is a blood test that shows a recent blood clot. It doesn't show anything else other than a recent blood clot. It won't show an old blood clot. It only shows new blood clots. And so I have been now doing that on my patients um, finding people who have recently had their COVID shot within the previous seven days, it needs to be between four and seven days, and doing a blood test on them called a D-dimer. And, and so I'm still trying to accumulate more information, but on the ones I have so far, 62% of them have evidence of clotting, which means that these blood clots are not rare. It means that the majority of people are getting blood clots that they have no idea that they're even having. So, Laura Lynn, the most alarming thing about this 
is that there are some parts of your body, like your heart and your brain and your spinal cord and your lungs, which cannot regenerate. When, when those tissues are damaged by blocked vessels, they are permanently damaged. So I now have six, six people in my medical practice with what we call reduced effort tolerance, which means that they just get out of breath much more easily than they used to. I have one fellow that, that, that used to walk to my office every week for actually for an arthritis injection who told me that he could walk two miles without any problem and now after a quarter of a mile, he is absolutely out of breath and it has been like that for five months. So on the basis of this D-dimer test, which proves that the majority of people are clotting, these six people who now have reduced effort tolerance, literally what's happened to them is they've plugged up thousands of tiny capillaries in their lungs. And, and, and the, the, the terrifying thing about this is not just that these people are now short of breath and, and can't do what they used to be able to do. But once you block off a significant number of blood vessels through your lungs, your heart is now pumping a against a much greater resistance to try and get the blood through your lungs. And the problem, so that causes a condition called pulmonary artery hypertension. It's literally like blood pressure, high blood pressure in your lungs because the blood can't get through because so many of the vessels are blocked. And the, the terrifying thing of this is that people with pulmonary artery hypertension usually die of right-sided heart failure within three years. So, so, so the, the huge concern about this mechanism of injury is that these shots are causing permanent damage and we haven't, you know, and, and, and the worst is yet to come because, you know, there are some, some tissues in your body like, like intestine and liver and kidneys that can regenerate to quite a good degree. But brain and spinal cord and heart muscle and lungs do not. They, when they're damaged... It's permanent, like all these young people who are now getting myocarditis from these shots. They have permanently damaged hearts. It doesn't matter how mild it is, they will not be able to do what they used to be able to do because heart muscle does not regenerate. So, so this is the this is the terrifying um, concern, and and not only is the long term outlook very grim. But with each successive shot, the damage will add and add and add. It's going to be cumulative because you're progressing.